picking up where we left off yesterday. When we were talking about the example that has two triangles. Remember the situation happened because the given angle, angle A, is acute. And then the side across from A is smaller than, or the side across from the given angle is smaller than the other given side. Okay? In that situation, I was talking about as we left yesterday, that we can have one typical triangle. We can also have the idea where this side of 6 that is out here could also swing under and make a very tiny triangle. Now, with this in mind, we have two triangles to find. We're going to start by finding what I would call the traditional triangle, my purple one up here. Okay? And then we'll have to tweak some things to be able to find the small blue green. So, going back to what you guys know from yesterday, what can we find first? Uh, or what, should, what do we have to find first, I guess I should say? We have to find angle B first? Yeah. Because we have a pair of information, yes. We have angle A and side A. So we have a pair of information. And in addition, we have side B. So if you have side B, then we're going to have to find angle B. And remember, we're using law of sines, yes. So to set up law of sines, I'm going to set it up as sine of A over side A equal to sine of... What did we just say? B over side B. And we're picking that because A is the set of information that we know. B, we know one of the two. So that means we can use law of sines to find the other. Fill in your information, of course. Sine of 30 degrees over 6 is equal to sine of B that I don't know over side B, which is 7. Remember, in order to solve this, we used what? Cross products, cross multiplying. Okay, so how fancy can we get? Can I do two steps in one? If we cross multiply, we're going to have what? 6 times sine B equals 7 times sine 30, yes? If I go ahead and move the 6 away from sine B, I'm going to go ahead and jump and say that, okay, sine B is going to be the 7 times sine of 30 degrees divided by the 6 that was multiplied by sine b. Are you guys okay with that jump I just did? Once we get into this, I know you'll be, but first step of the day, I had to check. Now, how do we find b? Yeah. If this says sine of capital B, sine of angle b, in order to find angle b, we have to do sine inverse. Remember we talked about switching your input and your output yesterday? So B is going to be equal to sine inverse of 7 times sine of 30 degrees divided by 6. Grab the calculators, do the math, or do the button pushing. You're not doing any math. You're just pushing buttons on the calculator. I do have my answer to one decimal place. Mm -hmm. Make sure you're getting the same answer, 35.7. That is 35.7 degrees, yes? Okay, so we have angle B. Now we're left to find our C's. What must we find next? We have to find angle C. And how do we find angle C? Add angle A and angle B. Add angle C and C equal to 180. Yeah. All three angles in a triangle add up to be 180, yes? I'm writing it up top because I'm going to need this other piece for an on. Um, finding my last side, which on my notes I actually have it kind of up at the top margin, so I just didn't set that up here. 
So what do we know? Angle, whoops. Why did I say angle? Okay, A was 30 degrees plus B was 35.7 degrees plus angle C has to equal 180, yes? And you guys are finding angle C to be? One fourteen point three degrees. And Okay. We've got angle C. Our last job is to find side C. So it's back to the sine A over sine A, or you can use B's if you really want to. I'm going to use A's because they were given in nice, neat numbers. And then sine of 1.14.3 over your C. So um, I'm going to set it up again. The sine of A over A equals sine of C over C. So sine of 30 degrees divided by 6 equals sine of 114.3 degrees divided by C. As long as you guys were okay with me doing my cross product multiplication and division in one step, I'm going to do that. If it's getting a little confusing for you, by all means, do a cross multiplication and then do your division in the next step if it's just not working for you. But So I would multiply the 6 times the sine of 114.3 degrees. And then technically I would multiply C and sine of 30. But to get C by itself, we're going to divide by sine of 30 degrees. And do some button pushing. And we get C to be 10.9. Okay, the basics coming back to us from yesterday. Because given a basic set of information, I definitely feel like you should be able to do the basics. Like, once you get into these groups, these problems are, the basic problem is not difficult. Okay? And that, you know, so just doing that first part is not a difficult piece. Now, okay, guys, we got to do round two here. So we did the purple. We have three answers to go with my purple triangle. Now we've got to repeat the process. But here's the deal. If we repeat the process the exact same way, we're going to get the exact same answers, aren't we? And those answers aren't going to match up with what this picture is showing. So we have to start a little differently. And this is, we only do this when we have the second triangle. But notice, so this dotted line over here was where this triangle was originally, right? And it was a six. Keep in mind, this 6 folds in up over here. Now, with this in mind, so if you look at this dotted triangle here, and I'm going to kind of dot it in orange so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay? You see that dotted triangle? It's 6 on the right, yes? And what is the side of it on the left? It's also 6. A triangle that has two equal sides also has what happening? Triangle with two congruent sides is going to have two congruent angles. Because keep in mind, your angles are proportional to have a, a relationship to your sides, right? So if you have two congruent sides, you also have two congruent angles. Now, over here on the previous problem, this was previously angle B over here, yes? What did we find angle B to be in the previous problem? So what am I trying to say there? If this angle B was 35.7 in the previous problem, then this is side 6, this is side 6. What else is 35.7? We're not in the green triangle. 
but this other piece is also 35.7. Okay? Are you with me? Kind of? Okay, the idea that it's just basically we're looking at 6, 6, so, if, and I'm going to erase this a moment. If that's 35.7, then since they're opposite the 6s, they both have to be 35.7. Now, how that helps us. How can I find my new angle B? And why are we doing 180 minus 35.7? They lay along a straight line. The vocab word is supplementary. I don't know if you guys remember supplementary or not, but two angles that lay along a straight line add up to be 180. So if this guy is 35.7, this B inside is going to be whatever 180 minus 35.7 degrees is. What is 180 minus 35.7? What was it? 144.3 okay. degrees. That's my new angle B. Now, if you look at that skinny little sliver of a triangle, does 144.3 make sense for B? It's an obtuse angle, isn't it? So that makes sense. So that's my new angle B. Now, I've got a new angle B. What do we need to find next? My new angle C? Angle A is still 30 degrees, right? Angle A is still 30. My original given, 6, 7, and 30, do not change. They are true for both pieces. Yep. So, in order to find my new angle C, all three angles in a triangle always add up to be 180. It didn't change along the way. So, angle A plus angle B plus angle C equals 180 degrees. So, it was still 30. My new angle B is 144.3 plus angle C that we're trying to find. So, what are you getting there? 5.7 degrees. It's small, but does it make sense? Look at that tiny little sliver of a triangle, yes? It should make sense. And we've got a new angle B, a new angle C. Now we need a new side C. And here's the deal, guys. We can still use our original A information. That's fine. Why we're going to get a new side C is because we're using a new angle C. Okay? So I'm going to set up just like I did last time, where it's sine of A over side A equals sine of C over side C. I can still use sine of 30 degrees over 6. The piece that changes is the sine of 5.7 degrees over C. Steps are still the same. Cross products. So C times sine of 30 is equal to 6 times sine of 5.7 degrees. In order to get C by itself, you'll divide by sine of 30 degrees. And we'll get a new little C answer. I say little, don't I? What do we get C side C to be? One, One point two. Okay. And it's little, but does it make sense? I mean, it's opposite, it's opposite that tiny angle, right? 1.2 is this piece right here that's opposite the angle of 5.7 degrees. 
okay? So this is your scenario when you have an acute angle and then the shorter side across from the acute angle than the other side, okay? This is the tough part of this lesson, okay? It's not that the math is hard, it's just understanding how to set this up, okay? One more example of this type. Let's talk C. Solve triangle ABC given that side A is 8, side B is 15, and angle A is 100. Well, I don't know if you have to, but I'm going to draw a triangle. Because my given angle is obtuse, and because I tend to put my angle A in the bottom left, I'm going to make my triangle look like such. And angle A is 100 degrees. If that's my angle A, across from A is side A, which is 8. Side B being 15, doesn't really matter. It can go either place. If you want it on the other side, it's not going to matter. I guess if you want me to label there's angle B then, and then my other two pieces are C's. Thoughts? wave going on here. Okay. We're going to start finding it, finding a piece. The only piece we can find at this point is angle B, yes. Have you tried to find it? Are we getting an answer? You got an here. So what scenario are we looking at here? A is obtuse. We have one triangle if the side opposite that angle is bigger than the other side. We have no triangles if the side opposite is smaller than the other side given. What's happening here, guys? How many obtuse angles can you have in a triangle? Just one, right? So 100 degrees, can we agree it will be the largest angle in this triangle? It will be the largest angle in this triangle, which means what needs to be across from it? If this is the largest angle, it needs to have the longest side. Is the longest side across from it? No, it's not. Okay, so this falls into the category, if you're looking back here, where no triangle is possible, 
because the side across from the obtuse angle is smaller than the other side given. Okay? So the key to watch out for, if you're given an obtuse angle and you don't have the largest side across from it, stop there. Okay? It can't happen. Okay, so obtuse angles must be opposite the longest side, thus no triangles possible. So I'm going to write a little note here for why obtuse angles must be opposite the longest side. No triangles possible. Now, those of you that got to a point of finding, trying to find your first angle, you got an error, correct? And that's because when you're trying to do sine inverse, there's only certain input. You get a value that's not a possible input, I believe, if I, if I recall correctly. Now, let me caution you. Does getting an error on the calculator automatically mean no triangles possible? I'm going to say not necessarily because it could also mean did you make a mistake somewhere? And I know I saw several of you. That's immediately what you were starting to do is where's my mistake? Where's my mistake, right? I was kind of watching you to decide when I wanted to jump in and ask. Yes, look for that mistake, but also check back for this scenario. Is your largest side across from your largest angle? Okay? So, that's the catch. Easiest one of the day in a way, but that is the catch. Okay? Okay, let's look at two um, word problem examples, scenarios here. As we look at these two, first one. Forest Ranger Chris Johnson at Ranger Station A Sites of fire in the direction of 32 degrees east of north. Ranger Rick Thorpe at Ranger Station B, 10 miles due east of A, sites the same fire on a line 48 degrees west of north. Find the distance from each ranger station to the fire. Now, in all honesty, this would be easier if we were looking in the book because the book provides a picture. However, it's not, it's not a bad picture to reason through and draw, which is why I decided to have us do that. So, let's break it down. Okay, first guy, station A, sites a fire in the direction of 32 degrees east of north. Okay, so there's station A. And then you've got the second guy at station B. Now, this isn't helpful to know. Where's station B? 10 miles due east of A. Where is due east of A? To the right. Do we know our directions? What did you say? I say never eat shredded weeds. But I'm a different generation. So never eat soggy waffles, never eat shredded weeds, shredded wheat, whatever you're going to say, right? So there we've got A, there we've got B. And what do we know about A and B? They are 10 miles apart, right? Okay, now let's go back to the beginning. The guy at A, sites a fire in the direction 32 degrees east of north. So visualize with me. Where's north? North on a paper is uh, up. So where is to the east? That's going to be to the to the right. Okay. So what I'm saying right here is this is where he's sighting the fire at. Now. It said 32 degrees east of north. Be careful, where is that 32 degrees? It's 32 degrees east of north. That means that 32 degrees is on that outside piece there, between north and my angle. Okay. Now, second guy, station B. Sites the same fire on a line 48 degrees west of north. So where is north? North is up. Where is west of north? To the left. So he's going to see the fire from this angle. 
48 degrees west of north, so we're looking to the left of north. 48 degrees is that angle out there. Okay. So, my job is to find what? The distance from each ranger station to the fire, which means I'm trying to find side A and side B. And if you want, you can label the fire C and then that 10 miles C. Okay. What needs to happen here? What? Okay, and how do we find angle A and angle B? Okay, are those right angles at each corner? North and east, north and west, they create right angles, don't they? So over here on the left, 90 minus 32 is going to be 58. Over here on the right, 90 minus 48 is going to be 42. Um, do we have to know C? We do because what's the pair of information we're going to have to know to set these problems up? C. We're going to have to know our C's, right? So angle C, all three angles in a triangle add up to be 180, and so we end up with? 80. I'm going to side with the 80. Because I know 58 and 42 at least end in a zero, so it at least ends in the right number for me. Okay. Can you set it up? You can say your C's have to be your start information. Sign of C over C and sign of A over A. So sign of 80 degrees over 10 is equal to sine of 58 degrees over side A. Cross product, so multiply and divide for your A, yes. So if we multiply cross products, 10 times sine of 58 degrees, and then divide by the sine of 80 degrees, And we're going to find side A to be 8.6. And that's 8.6 miles. Officially, what is that the distance between? The first fire, C and B. Side A is the distance between Ranger Station B and the fire. Okay, so just realize that side A is the distance from Ranger Station B to the fire. Okay. And then repeat the process, yes? Again, I'm going to use my C's because those are my more definite given. Sine of C over C equal to sine of B over B. So we're still starting off with sine of 80 over 10. And then sine of 42 over side B. Cross products. B times sine of 80 degrees going to equal 10 times sine of 42 degrees. Since it's B times sine of 80, we're going to divide by sine of 80. And side B is approximately 6.8 miles. And that is the distance from Station A to the fire. Okay. One more. 
assume you're okay on time? Yeah. Okay. Now, this problem we're definitely using for the picture from the book because this is a really difficult. Well, the last one, that was a doable problem. I felt like to draw a picture. You had to kind of process it and understand it. This one is tougher. So I definitely like having the picture in here. A road slopes 10 degrees above the horizontal and a vertical pole stands beside the road. The angle of elevation of the sun is 62 degrees and the pole cast a 14.5 foot shadow downhill along the road. Find the height of the telephone pole. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to spend some time labeling this picture. What are we being asked to find? Height of the pole, which is what? Okay, so just for the record, we're being asked to find A, correct? Okay. Now, let's go through and find some information here. A road slopes 10 degrees above the horizontal. So realize this dotted line right below the 10 degrees is your horizontal. This is saying the road slopes above it. So what, what do you assume about a telephone pole? Telephone pole is going to be, we hope, vertical, yes. I guess they're not always vertical, are they? Okay, in theory, they should be. Let's go with that, okay? But where am I trying to get you guys to go here? The road is 10 degrees above the horizontal. So here's your horizontal. Here's your telephone pole. What do we know about this angle over here on the right? This little piece is 10 degrees. What about this piece? 80 because the horizontal and the telephone pole ideally make a 90 degree angle, yes. So if we take off that 10, that makes this piece the 80. No, it's at angle B, but where is our triangle? So it's on the left side of the Okay. However, how do we find B now? The B that we really need. Okay. So we have 80 to the right of the telephone pole. To the left of the telephone pole, well, we've already talked about this theory today, two angles that lay along a straight line add up to be 180, Yes. So to the right of the telephone pole, we have 80. To the left of it, we're going to have 100, yes? So we know that angle B in the triangle, which is what I need to know, is 100. Okay? Let's go up top and work by C. C, up there. We need to get eventually to the C inside the triangle. But the angle of the elevation of the sun is 62 degrees. So the idea is the sun, you can think about as the sun coming up or the sun, sun looking down. What do we know about the 62? What else is 62? Not quite. What? Like, which one are you talking? So we have this pole. Which one are you talking the about? Line is that like going up? The dia the diagonal line B. Yeah. Is it like long? I mean, it, it's the third side of the triangle or the side of the triangle. I think what you're looking at, were you thinking that there's parallel lines here? That's my guess is what you're looking yeah. at. Yeah, well, here's the deal. The bottom of that triangle is not parallel with that line up top. It would be where that 10 degrees below the road is. That's the problem. But there is a 10 degree relation. So up top, what else is 62? The angle right across from it. I remember the vocab as vertical angles, or maybe opposite angles, but angles that are nose to nose, yes? I don't know exactly what your geometry vocabulary is, but I'm going to say that that angle there, do you agree with that? 
two lines cross. If one of them is 62, the other one on the other side is 62. Yes? Mm -hmm. Okay. What else can I find? Would she do take 90 now because of the telephone voltage should have already put 78 at a right angle? Okay. So telephone pole is vertical. That's 90. This one line is horizontal. Or telephone pole is vertical. Then we have this horizontal line. So it does make, oh, you were talking about on the other side. I was looking at on the right of the telephone pole, it's 90. I just realized what you were. I mean, that works too. Okay. He was also, he was looking at the left side, that the left side of the telephone pole and the vertical or the horizontal are going to create 90. If I could not be tongue-tied, this would be a whole lot easier to understand. Okay. So Ethan was taking you guys to this right here, that that's going to be a 90 degree angle. So he was taking it to 90 minus 62. It works. I like it. It's probably makes sense. Would you just solve for angle A from there? Yep. Okay. I was taking you to a straight line. 90, 62, and some angle equal 180. Are we still going to get to the same place? We are. Okay. What is this angle C inside here? 28. Okay. You do need to know angle A, because since we want to find side A, we do need to know angle A. And angle A, it's a third angle and triangle, right? So 100 plus 28, whatever 180 minus 128 is, which is 52. Okay. Now, we need to know side A. That's what we're looking for, which means we're going to have to use angle A. And angle A we just found to be... 52 degrees. Now, we need to know another set of information, yes? I forgot to have us decide where this is, but what have we not used from what was given? The pole cast a shadow 14.5 feet down feet shadow downhill. Which letter is that? The shadow on the ground is C. So we know that C is 14.5. If C is 14.5, what else do I have to know to make this work? Angle C. Angle C inside the triangle is 28 degrees. We have all the information we need to know, yes? Do your setup and math. So sine of C over side C equal to sine of A over side A. So sine of 28 degrees over 14.5 equals sine of 52 degrees over side A. Cross products, 14.5 times sine of 52 degrees divided by sine of 28 degrees. All of that to find that A is approximately how long? Twenty four point three feet. And that is the height of your telephone pole. <clears throat> okay. Now, as I said, what was difficult about that one? The picture. Okay, the picture is, in, it's taken me a while to figure out that picture, okay? Okay, you have homework. You have a few minutes. I would encourage you at least to try and, I don't know, maybe look at one. Um, page 432, 2 through 12 evens, 20, 22, 38, and 39. 2 through 12 evens are some traditional problems. 20 and 22 are your two triangle problems. 38 and 39 are your word problems, Okay. And I think it even tells you in the directions, which is why I'm not hesitating to tell you, that 20 and 22 have two triangles. Okay? Can we have to draw the triangles? Okay.